All right, we're back. We're talking with Lee Strobel. He was the former legal editor of the Chicago Tribune. He was a skeptic, a straight-out atheist. And uh, as he started to investigate uh, the claims of Christianity, the claims of Christ, he came down to the key point, namely the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Did it happen? And he's talking about the points underneath that question. Did Jesus rise from the dead? The evidence that started to persuade him that, goodness sakes, possibly this thing actually happened. All right, you already talked about the fact of uh, review for us here. Now, first, the execution, that yep. Jesus was definitely dead when he was taken down from the cross. And then the early accounts. This is not a legend that developed a long time ago. We have extremely early accounts that affirm the resurrection. Then I go on to the third E, which mm -hmm. is the empty tomb. And the most powerful fact about the empty tomb of all, I think, is that nobody in the first century was claiming it was anything but empty. In other words, uh, everybody conceded it was empty. The, the, the um, authorities tried to spread the story that the disciples were asleep, or that the uh, guards were asleep and the disciples stole the body, which made no sense because they had no motive or means or opportunity. Um, besides which, that's admitting the body is gone. Yeah, and if you're uh, sleeping, how'd you know it was the disciples? Exactly. Yeah. The story never made sense in the beginning. Nobody believes it today. But the bottom line is, the, 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 even the skeptics had to come up with a, with a story to try to explain it away, even though they were unsuccessful in doing it. Yeah. Plus, 75% of the scholars, critical scholars out there, they believe that's a historical fact. Yeah, and that includes the, the skeptical scholars. Yeah. Uh, that's Christian, atheist. The people who really studied this issue, 75% agree the tomb was empty. Okay, so you got another point in the historical record. You've got an empty tomb of Jesus. So that raises the question, what in the world happened to yeah. the body? And the next E, therefore, is eyewitnesses. And what we have is 515 people who encountered the resurrected Jesus. And we have uh, Paul, you know, talking about his own experience. We have, um, um, you know, the earliest account that we have of all of the resurrection, which is this 1 Corinthians 15 creed that we talked about of the early church. That mentions 500 people at once encountering him. And then I love what it says. It says, oh, excuse me, by the way, a lot of these guys are still around. You don't believe me? Go talk to them. Check it out yourself. No way they would have said that if it wasn't true. Yeah, you could verify it. Exactly. So if you were to you know, like call to a witness stand all of the people who encountered the resurrected Jesus and just cross-examine each one of them for 15 minutes apiece and go around the clock, you'd be sitting here for 126 straight hours listening to eyewitness accounts. How many people, after hearing 126 straight hours, would walk away saying, eh, I don't believe it? You know, I mean, that's... I, as, <laughs> you used to sit in court and do that. I, exactly. I've seen people sent to the death chamber on a fraction of this kind of evidence. So I think there's powerful evidence that Jesus was, in, you know, uh, encountered these individuals whose lives were transformed, including Saul, the persecutor of Christians who became Paul, the great missionary. Why? Because of the resurrection. The half-brother of Jesus, James, who was a doubter of Jesus' divinity during his lifetime, becomes a leader of the local church. Why? Because 1 Corinthians 15 says he encountered the resurrected Jesus. All right. Then you have the emergence of the church. The emergence of the church. And what's amazing about that is in the very city where Jesus had been put to death, the disciples are going around a few weeks later saying, hey, he rose from the dead. Now, how do you sell that to people if they're there and they know better? Instead, what we see is the disciples appealing to the common knowledge that their audiences had. Peter got up in the very same city where Jesus had been put to death a few weeks later and looked at people. And he says, you remember Jesus? He did miracles in your midst. You know that he did. And then he said this Jesus, God raised from the dead, quote, to which we're all witnesses. Well, how did they respond? Did they say, Peter, come on, you're exaggerating, you're making this <laughs> stuff up. No, it's, history shows that on that day, 3,000 people said, Peter, we know you're telling the truth, what do we do? And they found forgiveness and grace through Jesus Christ and the church is miraculously born in the very same city where he's put to death. How do you explain that if this is legend or if, if, if it's stuff that they were making up, they were exaggerating and they were lying about? I think that's powerful stuff.